welcome to week two of the Fantasy Football Last Call podcast. I'm Joe Bond, host of the show. Joining me tonight is Dave Eddy. What's up, man? Hey, what's going on, Joe? It's been a while. Uh, yes, it has. Uh, you know, you're normally a, a baseball guy, so we have not had you on since we've been focusing on football on our uh, fantasy six pack hour podcast with AJ uh, for the last couple of months. You know, football unfortunately does, in your case, rule the uh, rule the fantasy landscape. So it's a quick transition over once baseball gets into full swing. But uh, yeah, so you know. We're watching the uh, the Eagles Falcons game right now, and ooh, it is a rough go of it for the for the Eagles tonight. And Carson Wentz negative fantasy points as of right now, so hopefully he uh, he can pull this together. It's it's seventeen six Atlanta. Uh, I mean, to be fair though, Wentz has been banged up and hit all night. Alshon's hurt. D. Jackson's hurt. This this offense is just in miserable shape right now. So, in fact, Wentz went out for a, a you know a few series there. Uh, they had to play Josh McCown, and yikes, you never want to see that. <laughs> um, no. Anyway, man, let's uh, so let's let's get to these games and, and just give our quick analysis and reaction to them. You know, just have some fun, but uh, also hopefully be helpful to people listening. So we'll start here with the Cardinals and Ravens. Uh, Ravens won 23-17. Dude, Lamar Jackson, fantasy gold again today, man. And and he did it with the legs, which is what you're expecting from him more often than what he did last week. 120 yards on the ground, 272 in the air, though, and two passing touchdowns. Still not bad. Uh, Mark Andrews did it again. Eight receptions, 112 yards and a touch. Hollywood Brown, 13 targets with 8 for 86. I mean, not quite the monster game he had last week, but still a solid week, man. I mean, what are you feeling for these Ravens? Is this just the competition they're playing so far, or is this this for real? Is this going to be an offense we're going to be able to count on all year? I'll tell you, this to me was the most surprising game, Um, so it's kind of fun to talk about this one first. Um, you know, I'm a Lions fan, so last week's Cardinals game really pissed me off. Um, <laughs> so, so to be honest, I thought that the Ravens were gonna were gonna roll them pretty hard, um, but they sure as hell did not. Uh, I mean, Kyler Murray, you know, obviously didn't didn't do well enough to win the ball game, but I mean, he's impressive. Um, I believe he is second all time right now in yards thrown um, in the first two starts. I mean, and half of that's against the Ravens. I, I would yeah, say that that's solid, I'd dude. say that's pretty impressive. Um, and then I'm also honestly impressed with the Ravens specifically. Um, the guys you you mentioned. Um, I mean, Lamar Jackson did it again. Uh, Andrews surprisingly did it again. Hollywood Brown, you know, did it again. Uh, I could argue though, you know, they are two weaker opponents, so I don't definitely think that this will continue all year. But I didn't necessarily expect it to continue at this level again this week yeah definitely uh definitely a good showing by the their offense there on the cardinal side you, you alluded to murray through 40 times again dude i mean i forget what it was last week but it was a lot i mean they were in overtime but still mm-hmm. threw the ball a lot again he's not running as much which is kind of interesting i mean a lot of people thought you know oh, he's gonna change the quarterback landscape he's gonna run he's gonna pass he's gonna you know he's gonna rush for a thousand yards right like I, dude, he's run like six times. <laughs> it's not happening. Well, I mean, it's it's different though. Like you know, like I, I got to watch you know him in a full game last week um, against the Lions, and you could see that he definitely was a little bit more disciplined than you would expect. You know, someone who can run as well as he can, and you know, a rookie quarterback to boot. You would you would think that you know he'd be having quick feet to get out of the pocket, but he really didn't. Um, the few times that he did. You could just see that, you know, the the speed difference in the NFL um, compared to college is, you know, is so drastic. Uh, Which is to be expected. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, you know, Murray's still fast as hell, don't get me wrong. Um, but, you know, the Lions linebackers, when he was, you know, coming out of the pocket, were, were you know, keeping up with him. Um, and the Lions aren't necessarily known for fast linebackers. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I think that's part of it, too. Um, if, I mean, honestly, if anything, I think it's more – more good coaching than anything cuz like i said even even a, a guy that doesn't have his speed as a rookie you know early on i could just see you know 
you know, having happy feet trying to get out of that pocket. And, and that really wasn't him. Yeah. Uh, so the other part about the Cardinals that I, I thought was kind of interesting was now, yeah, I mean, they were, they were kind of playing catch up most of this game, but David Johnson only got seven carries, 14 yards. He did get a touchdown. I mean, I guess that sort of salvaged his game, but not really. I mean, he, you know, totaled like, well, you know, 1.4 in touch, you know, that's 7.4 points in, in PPR. Um, he had one reception on one target. That's bad. <laughs> when the quarterback throws 40 times, you expect more of those to go to David Johnson. I mean, Kirk was good. Fitz was good. But it I don't know if this was just, you know, the Ravens taking him out and making him go downfield to these other guys. But, uh, you know, that's just something we got to keep it on. I mean, that was the worry coming into this year was, like, how much is he going to get targeted in the in the passing game? And, you know, last week he was pretty decent, but this week not so not so great. So, you know, just something else to keep an eye on. I'm still I'm still rolling with him. Moving on here, my unfortunate hometown team, <laughs> the Redskins. Yikes. All right, let's get it over with. Cowboys, Redskins. Uh, this was essentially a Cowboys home game in at FedEx Field because the Redskins can't sell their tickets anymore. And... They lost thirty-one to twenty-one. Zeke back at it, man. Back at the elite workload level, which is what everybody wanted to see. It took a game, twenty-three carries, one hundred and eleven yards, and a touch. Didn't have a lot of work in the passing game, but wasn't needed there. Um, Gallup was solid. Cooper caught a touchdown. Uh, Dak threw another three touchdowns. That's eight on the year, man. That's uh, that's a really solid start for him. Are we feeling Dak as like a as like a top eight ish quarterback all year, maybe top five, you know, at this pace? Um, or is this uh you're looking to sell and maybe go after somebody else? I mean, I don't know that I would say, you know, top eight quarterback. And I mean, that's not even, you know, insanely high. Um I mean they, they they've got a pretty good offensive setup right now. I mean, obviously they can can run the ball at will with that offensive line and, you know, with, with Zeke, but Kellen Moore in town, shout out to my former line quarterback, um, you know, is bringing an offense that, you know, is throwing the ball and obviously, you know, Prescott doesn't suck that bad, you know, and he's able to, you know, to do well, but I mean, 26 out of 30 today, I mean, shit, man, it's kind of hard to argue with, you know, his, his start to the season uh, that offense, if you know, if, if they can throw the ball like that, you know that they can run the ball whenever they want to. Uh, that that gets scary real quick. Yeah, pretty much. Now, for the Redskins here, we're looking at not a whole lot, man. I mean, McLaurin showed again, 5 for 62 in a touch, so, that, so that's solid. AP, though, 10 for 25, just nothing, and nobody else did anything else in the running game. He at least scored because there's that. I mean, McKeenum, 221 and two touchdowns, um, no interceptions, so you like to see that, but just – it just wasn't good all around. I mean, the Redskins or whatever. Um, I guess though. I mean, I mean, like looking forward. Uh, my my thought is, you know, are you, are we feeling ready enough to fire up McLaurin in like standard setup leagues here? Um, I'm not. Um, not 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 personally. Um, I mean, if we're talking maybe you know in the right DFS matchup, uh, sure. But again, I, I highly doubt it. Um, if unless I'm stacking it with Keenum, which I can never fathom possibly no. happening. Um, you know, <laughs> I don't. I don't think. So. I don't. Yeah, maybe. I, I guess. <laughs> Do we? Play um, <laughs> I don't even know. For your sake, I hope so. For <laughs> TV ratings, I hope not. No. I can't not. imagine any more than maybe the players' they wives not, and they mothers watching Miami. that one. Ah, oh no, they do. We oh, God. six. Please tell me it's Monday Night Football. <laughs> No, it's a 1 p.m. game. Ah, How hilarious would that be? Yeah, right. Uh, Race the first pick. I think the best thing that the Redskins maybe are going to have going for them is, um, you know, when they finally decide to just say, you know, fuck this and and put Haskins in there. Is that a good thing, though? Did you see him throw the ball? Like, he, like, looks like he tries to shot put the ball sometimes in the preseason, man. He's not good. I don't I don't want anything to do with Haskins. On this I don't, well, you're a Redskins fan. I mean, I guess looking at it from the outside, um, I mean, again, I don't – no, I haven't seen Haskins There's play. There's a lot of Redskins uh, fans that like Haskins. I'm like the one who doesn't. 
Really? <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, no, you, you definitely don't want to put him in too early. I mean, if he's absolutely not ready, then no. What What's the point of, you know, either ruining his confidence or getting the kid killed? But, I mean, as soon as he's capable, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't put him in there. I mean, what are you saving him for? You know? Right. I mean, you're you not saving him for a playoff play. run next year. Absolutely. So, no, I, I, I agree. He, he, we will see him at some point this year. It's just a matter of when. Um, but, I mean, uh, I don't think Chase Keenum was the problem, though. I mean, if you look at the stats, I mean, I nobody – Nobody did shit, so I don't. I don't think it's a Case Keenan problem at this point. It's no, just a matter of, not. you know, Haskins is going to have to get his snaps in when they really don't matter. You know. Yeah. All right, moving on. Uh, Colts Titans. Colts win this one, nineteen seventeen. A lot closer of a game than if. Well, I, actually, I think a lot of people thought this one might be close, but uh, uh, maybe a little bit lower scoring. <laughs> um, Brissett, one hundred forty six yards, three touchdowns though. That helps. He spread the ball around a lot, though, man. Um, you know, six targets for Hilton, four for Ebron, who did score, four for Chester Rogers, three for Doyle, three for Mac. Two, like everybody got some, right? Like it's just he did not favor any one guy. Um, the running game wasn't spectacular, minus a fifty-five yard uh, Wilkins run. After that, I mean, Mac was the guy that everybody used. 20 for 51, nothing great. Uh, I, I mean, anything to get excited about for the Colts here? Looking. Hello? Oh, I lost you. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's okay, man. Uh, so, yeah, anything anything excited, exciting about the Colts? From this game? Um, I mean, if I'm a Colts fan, I guess, you know, the only thing that I'm excited about is, you know, I, I guess I don't think that, you know, Brissett is, you know, the as big of a fall off maybe as somebody from the outside would have would have thought that he would be. Yeah, I mean, yeah, de- definitely a knock. You know, if you look at his QBR, 29.1, still not very good. Uh, but no, over on the Titans no. side here, Henry got his again, 15 for 81 and a touchdown. Mariota, Blas, usual, 154 and a touch. You know, again, spread the ball around, but nobody really getting it done. Walker, six targets. Corey Davis, five. A.J. Brown, five. After that, it doesn't matter. Um, I mean, the one thing I take away from this, only because I was kind of hyping him up, was Deion Lewis. He had three carries and mm-hmm. one target. Uh, maybe this was because they were in the lead for a while, and it was such a close game. They didn't need to use Lewis, so he's going to be very game script dependent. But I know I was hyping that they were just going to not forget about Deion Lewis this year, like they did last year toward the end of the, end of the season, and that is clearly not happening. So if you took a chance on Lewis, I'm sorry. And you can you can drop him now. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't think that offense is you know really capable of of carrying both guys. Um, specifically, whenever you know Mariota can't pass for shit, anyways. Yeah, so. I just the, I just didn't think Henry was gonna be you know consistent enough or, or good enough all season, and they were gonna have to rely on Lewis. And then maybe not so much in the running game, but I also didn't think this offense was gonna be good enough to keep up with people. Right. And but maybe their defense is good enough to keep the games close that keeps Henry in the game more than Lewis. So yeah, that I mean, was that, my that, take, but it, it yeah. it's not working so far. So move on. Just move on, people. Um so next game here, Seattle twenty eight, Steelers twenty six. Big, big news out of this game is Big Ben hurt his elbow and it did not look good. Like it was one of those like he threw the ball like maybe like a little hyper extension or something to like ligaments like you never really know there. Um, taken out of the game pretty early, uh, never came back. James Connor also came out of the game knee injury. No no updates really yet on those injuries, but just know that they are there. Uh, Mason Rudolph came in though and was, I mean, solid, not great, but solid. Uh, Twelve for nineteen, hundred twelve yards, a touch. Uh, he did throw a pick. And both of those touchdowns went to Vance McDonald. So those those of you who reached for uh, not reached, but you know took a chance on Vance McDonald, 
in that range where, you know, it was kind of like, you know, I saw him kind of going relatively close in some drafts with, with the OJ Howard Ingram Hunter Henry area. So, uh, you know, that second tier of tight ends, you know, paid off this week. Juju, 5 for 84, pretty solid there. Connor didn't really do much, 11 for 33, but did score. Um, uh, I mean, without Big Ben, though, I mean, what are we feeling about this offense with a Mason Rudolph behind under center if that's what it's going to have to be for a few weeks? I mean, it's tough to feel too good about him. Uh, I'm not sure how many people necessarily were pegging the Steelers for, you know, a a no doubt playoff team. Um, I mean, gosh, depending on how bad that injury is, could you imagine if, you know, they lose bell Brown and Roethlisberger kind of, you know, one after another pretty rough. Uh, those, those, those who were saying Connor wasn't going to be anything this year and weren't, weren't, weren't jumping on his, on that bandwagon are going to be, you know, screaming from the mountaintops. I told you. Well, all right. It's totally different with Ben Roethlisberger isn't there. <laughs> so, yeah, completely different. Completely um, different at that point. Yeah, completely different. Uh, but hey, you know, it is pretty nice to see Mason Rudolph complete twelve and nineteen. Uh, look, I know Seattle isn't the same Seattle defense that it was in the past, but they're still, you know, they're still pretty good. Um, and it, you know, through the two touchdowns, you know, you you'll take it. Um. I'm not saying start Mason Rudolph, but I don't think the you know the supporting cast is going to be just you know put him on your bench and forget about him until Ben Roethlisberger comes back. Yes, they get moved down a notch, but I don't think it's going to be completely horrible. Uh, on the other side of the ball here, Russell Wilson threw for 300 yards and three touchdowns. That's through 35 times, man. I honestly don't remember the last time Russell Wilson threw 30 35 times, but he did, and uh, people I'm sure are going to be you know happy to happy to take it. Uh, Lockett got 12 targets. That's what we're looking to see. Last week was not the case for him. He caught 10 for 79. Metcalf caught the touchdown, so that's kind of cool to see. And then Will Disley, the early season uh, tight end Cinderella from last year before he broke his knee, uh, he got two touchdowns. So both tight ends scoring twice here in this game. I think the big news coming out of this one for Seattle, though, is the running game. And it's interesting to see Rashard Penny get 10 carries, 62 yards, and got the touchdown. Uh, Carson got 15 for 60. So the yardage is about the same, but a little bit, you know, what's 66% to Carson, 33% to Penny. I'm actually surprised to see that much of a split. Um, What about you? Yeah, I mean, that's definitely, you know, what what I take away from the game is, you know, pretty much what you mentioned was, you know, Seattle, you know, threw the ball, well, Russell threw the ball 35 times, um, Lockett, you know, got his catches, got his targets, and then the next thing that really stands out is, you know, the the penny carries compared to Carson. Um, didn't, didn't watch the game, um, full disclosure, so I guess I can't really, you know, speak just beyond the number of carries. Uh, I, I can't I, I can't imagine it was a game plan thing um, because they used Carson so exclusively last week. Mm-hmm. But I mean, that, you know, last week. But but that could be part of it too, I suppose. Yeah, I don't know. I like I I uh, I mean I only see what I see on red zone and and so it it is tough to follow all of it. I'll have to you know by the time the Thursday show comes around, I'll get the snap counts. I'll get the you know the number of total touches and, and things like that and targets all over the place. But as of, you know, first reaction, which is exactly what this is, it's a little eye opening to see Richard Penny kind of close the gap there on the, on the touches and be more efficient. So that's definitely something else to take away here. Uh, next game here, bills and giants bills win this one, 28, 14, so a couple notes on Devin Singletary, 57 yards and one touchdown. Nobody else on this team really stood out, uh, especially on the ground. Um, Devin Singletary, though, has a hamstring injury and was taken out of this game. So that is huge news. Um, you know, people were just expecting him to be the one to take over. Um, but maybe, maybe not the case now. The, uh, you know, I guess John Brown, 7 for 72. Gore got 68 yards. 
and uh, and the touchdown, I believe, is what I'm writing down here. I kind of like shorthanded all this. Yeah, 68 yards oh, touchdown. It. So, but I mean, he had 19 carries and 68 yards, as opposed to Singletary got six and 57. I mean, Singletary is clearly the more dynamic player here. So it's it's going to be pretty big if he if he gets knocked out here. Um, Josh Allen did okay, 253 yards, a touchdown. He ran for 21 and another touchdown, so a solid fantasy game. But as far as like good quarterbacking, 19 for 30, not so much. I don't know, man. I'm still just not the biggest Allen fan. From a fantasy standpoint, though, he's gonna have his games. A- anything you're, you know, taking away from the Buffalo side that excites you? I mean, not really. I mean, you know, for I mean, I know they're two and zero. Um, I don't, you know, consider them a playoff contender. I, I definitely think that, you know, they're they're playing for the future. So any game that, you know, whether injury or not, any game that, you know, Frank Gore, you know, has more than half your team's carries, I, you know, that's not good. Um, you know, Josh Allen, I mean, I, I think he played fairly well. I, I don't ex- think, think you're expecting Josh Allen to absolutely, you know, tear anybody up. Uh, he definitely uses his legs a lot. I mean, he ended up with seven carries himself, um, scoring a touchdown. Yeah. So, I mean, I, you know, the Giants aren't anything, you know, no. special uh, outside of Saquon Barkley. So, you know, again, the Bills are 2-0, and but, you know, I don't necessarily consider this to be a, a, a big victory. I mean, it is a road win. So, as a Lions fan, I can tell you road wins aren't as easy as, you know, you know everyone thinks that they can be. So, I mean, kudos to the Bills, you know. Yeah, and and uh, moving over to the New York side, you hit it on the head right there. You know, the, the Giants are nothing, honestly. <laughs> like outside of Barkley, who did it again, eighteen hundred and seven in a touch. He got his touchdown early, uh, twenty-seven yard run. Uh, it was a pretty impressive run too. Uh, I mean, what is this? T.J. Jones? I'm not even sure who this hell this is. T.J. Jones yeah, got the former touchdown. former Lion. Come on, yeah, man. former Lions. That's right. Your, that's right. You don't know your former Lions. <laughs> Sorry, man. I'm this uh, last time I'm coming out this podcast. I don't, I don't know podcast. my fourth string that's former it. Lions. That's um, it. <laughs> I do know the name now that I thought about it. Do you, you um, want to hear a fun fact about T.J. Jones? Sure. Uh, T.J. Jones one time uh, caught five touchdown passes for me in a game of Madden. <laughs> nice. Okay. Yep. And the uh, guy that I was playing sent me an instant message that said, "Who the fuck is T.J. Jones?" <laughs> Nice. I was gonna ask you, are you playing a rookie mode? <laughs> no, that's good. Um so the one the look, Eli, who cares, right? Benny Fowler, who cares? TJ Jones, nobody cares. Um, Evan Ingram, we do care. Eight targets, that's awesome. Only six for forty eight though. Eh. Obviously Shepard was out. That's you know, that that's that's a big blow to the offense and Tate will be coming back soon to help kind of balance some things out. Um, looking more, a little more on Barkley though, the thing that kind of strikes me is that he got seven targets, which is awesome, but was only able to pull in three of them. I mean, again, I didn't, I don't get to see everything because I watch Red Zone, but uh, the one thing I'll, I'll want to look at, like some advanced stats, is like were these catchable balls, or was just Eli just throwing ducks to him, or was like getting implanted? Because, I mean, that's not that's not a good catch percentage. You know, you have to wonder if these were like. But that's not Barkley. Like you feel like Barkley's better than that. So I don't know if he would agree with that or not. But that's the, that's my initial thought on it. And I don't think we need to talk too much more about the Giants. <laughs> um, Forty nope. Nineers, forty one Bengals, seventeen. Woo! This was an ass whooping. Um, did not see this one coming. Not gonna lie. Um, Forty Nineers. Did it on the ground, man. They did it in the air. They did it everywhere, dude. It was insane how good they were uh, today. Um, and I'm trying to find the damn box score. Anyway, I have the notes. So Brita and Mostert, 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 I don't know. I do that every time. Ran. They both ran very well. Um, 121 for Brita. Mostert ran for 83. Interestingly enough is Jeff Wilson, who just got promoted from the practice squad. He got two touchdowns. So I don't know if that was, you know, just red zone carries or what. Like, I, I didn't actually get to see the two touchdowns. Uh, no, they, they were short. They were too short. Touchdowns. Two, I thought they were. I, yeah, actually, he I did vultured. see one of them. But still, that's something to, you know, to know is going to possibly happen. Um, Moster did get one in the air, though. So that's, you know, that was good for him. Uh, also through the air, Garoppolo threw for almost 300 yards and three touchdowns. 
Debo got one. Goodwin got one. And Mostert got one. So still nothing, nothing for Pettis, which got a little bit more hype this week. You know, he said he was healthy and he's going to be good. Um, so I don't know, man. At this point, I think I'm I think I'm ready to cut bait with Pettis. It just seems like it's not happening for him. You know, he heard all the heard all the rumblings in the preseason that Shanahan was not happy with him and he needed to earn his spot and he clearly has not earned his spot. And when the offense scores forty one points and you got zero targets, you're not needed. So that that's a oh, oh hey, he threw a pass. <laughs> I just realized that he threw a pass for sixteen yards. <laughs> Yay. Um, but I don't know, man. Uh, you know, what are we feeling with this running game here? Breed and most most dirt, you know, the 12 and 13 carries pretty split and they, they both did very well. Yeah. I don't, I don't necessarily think that if, if the Niners are going to do anything that it, the running game is going to be necessarily, um, what carries them. Uh, I think it'll be, you know, Samuel, um, and Goodwin, you know, stepping up. Um, obviously they have George Kittle. So, I think, you know, passing wise, you know, they're not too bad. I know, you know, Garoppolo isn't, you know, the greatest quarterback ever, but, you know, 300 yards basically and three touchdowns on 25 attempts. I mean, you know, they put up 41 points. I, it's kind of tough to argue with it. Again, Cincinnati isn't, you know, isn't, isn't so good. Um, but, you know, they did go from, you know, West Coast to East Coast and, and win a, win a road game. I mean, that, that, that's something. Yeah, pretty solid there. Um, so on the Bengals side, Boyd bounced back with a big game, 122 yards, caught all 10 targets. Ross, kind of surprising me, man, 112 in a touch. Got eight targets, only caught four of them, but, I mean, it's a deep ball guy. Like, you sort of expect that. Um, Mixon was limited. I mean, are we just chalking that up to being, you know, he wasn't 100% or are we worried here with Mixon? No, I'm not worried about Joe Mixon. Um, I mean, we talked about, mixing a little bit on our DFS podcast and, and he was one of my one of my fades this week um he, he wasn't healthy um he very well could have not played so you know 11 carries 17 yards yeah, I mean it makes it makes sense uh, yeah. I mean Bengals suck anyway so you know <laughs> yes. if I if I'm playing against the Bengals I'm you know trying to stop Joe Mixon so I mean I don't I don't necessarily I wouldn't necessarily be overly concerned i would i would take it more of you know he, he was definitely hurt yeah i agree um so got to speed some things up here uh chargers lions alone to the low scoring game lions 13 chargers 10 lions got their first win hey they they have not lost a game this season they're they're undefeated man <laughs> uh dude austin eckler though is a beast uh melvin gordon who dude yeah uh, Austin Eckler, 17 rushes for 66 yards and a touch, caught another six for 67, and it should have been more, dude. There was yep, one, and it, he got a touchdown, and it got called back, and uh, it seemed like an iffy call from what I can remember. And no, so, it was legit. Was it? I, I just remember. I like, mean, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't like break the play for him, but it was, it was legit. And yeah. then, I mean, you know, w- watching the game, I can then tell you that the same thing happened to Jackson. Jackson basically did the same thing. Um, right after on the same drive, and his got brought back too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, Eckler got 17 carries to Jackson seven, so this is clearly Eckler. You know, he's the one you want. Um, uh, other than that, I mean, Rivers didn't throw a touchdown. He threw a pick, you know, almost 30 yards, but not doing it for any fantasy. Keenan Allen eight for 98, so you know, a good PPR day. Um, Mike Williams, I guess the the thing we look at Mike Williams is he came out unscathed, or at least you know we hope he did. I mean, nobody heard about the knee injury until, you know, later, you know, earlier in the week, you know, after, after the game anyway, uh, last week. Uh, but he caught a pretty amazing, like, deep pass where he just jumped up, but he looked like he landed and sort of grimaced really bad. So we'll have to see if he really did come out unscathed. On the other side of the ball, Detroit, uh, Matt Stafford threw the ball 30 times, 245 in two touch, but two, two picks. Uh, carry on 12 for 41, not what you're looking for, but Hey, at least it wasn't like a true 50, 50 split with CJ Anderson. Um, although Ty Johnson got, uh, another five carries. So if you put those together, it's, there's a lot of carries that he's not getting 
he did see he did get two for 47 at a touch which is kind of an interesting play like bobbled it like three times and it's almost like yeah. the Chargers didn't think he was actually going to catch it because everybody looked like they stopped and he just like ran past everybody once he finally caught it um Galladay caught a, a pretty deep deep touchdown late in the game uh to to put it over the top for the Lions Eight for one seventeen and a touch, so so good to see him have a big game, which a lot of people were really thinking he'd have a uh, a real breakout season this year. But uh, I'm just not sure we're gonna get it from him with with this offense kind of being a you know middle of the road overall offense. But what what as a Lions fan, man, what's your what's your true takeaway of this team? Like as far as man, you know, how long fantasy you got, perspective? Man. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so with this one, I mean, if I wanted to, we could go on and on forever. Um, sure. But I mean, what, what's your question specifically? Just you know, their offense. I mean, just you know, fantasy wise. Like, I mean, who who we uh, you know are we worried at all about Carry On or anything like that? I mean, I think um, a, a start, but Carry On sort of had kind of meh days. I mean, if if that little bobble play didn't happen, like we'd be looking at Carry On, be like, man, what's going on? I tell you what, the box score did, didn't do him justice today. I, I thought he ran the ball well. I'm actually surprised to see his long run of nine yards. I, I thought I saw like a. I thought I remember like a 15 yard run where he broke like three tackles. And, I did too. And whatnot. But I, I guess I'm going to trust the box score here. Um, <laughs> Maybe but, it was I Ty mean, Johnson. He had a 17 yard. No, no. I don't um, think so either. So, I mean, I guess fantasy wise, like, yeah, the, the lines are different than they have been in the past. They're, they're not sitting there firing the ball around like, like they have in the past. Um, one of Stanford's interceptions actually was exactly that. He was, he was trying to throw a deep ball um, like he was fucking throwing to, to Megatron again, um, but it was Marvin Jones, and he was double covered, and it was easily picked. Uh, but, but this team's really trying to run the ball, and they're really trying to you know, get some play action off of that, and they've been successful. I mean, Stanford's numbers haven't been too bad. Uh, he, the, two, the two picks suck. Um, one of them was totally his fault. Uh, you know, Hawkinson didn't do anything today. Maybe that was part of the game plan because they, you know, were without uh, Derwin James. So I kind of thought Hawkinson might have a big day. But all in all, this was more of a defensive battle than anything. Um, you know, Eckler looked great. Uh, Keenan Allen looked really good. Um, he, I wouldn't say he, he owned Slay today, but um, he probably had one of the better days I've seen a receiver have against uh, Darius Slay. Even though Slay got the pick at the Slay end, got but, the pick, yeah, I saw yeah, that. <laughs> but, but I mean, the, the the win goes to Keenan Allen in today's game between those two. Yeah. All right, so the next game here: Jags twelve, Texans thirteen. Low scoring game, man. You you kind of thought Texans were going to be able to put some points up on this Jaguars defense that, um, you know, really is 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 struggling still for a second year in a row. It seemed like after week one, but, um, Jacksonville side. Uh, Fournette did nothing, man. Fifteen for forty-seven. Um, DJ Shark, do 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 do. Um, seven mm-hmm. fifty-five and a touch. So so good for him. Having a second solid week and a DD man. One for three. Yikes! That's not that's not good, man. I've got crushed by him in a couple of leagues this this week. Um, not much to like there. I mean, low scoring game, so not much to like really anywhere. Uh, Deshaun only 159 yards. You know, so Hopkins didn't didn't do it for you. Fuller didn't do it for you. Uh, Kiki played, but he didn't do anything. I mean, Hyde rushed the ball 20 times for 90 yards. That's like the best thing that came out of this game, and it's still not even good. Um, uh, Duke was six for 31 and still only got one target so that's that's probably like the one thing that i would focus on from like an analyst side is the fact that the rushing like the two running backs the the amount of touches and uh targets that they had total was heavily favored in hides hides um on high side um what are your thoughts on this game at all if you have any um i mean if if, so if i'm the texans you know um you've got a a rookie quarterback in there, you know, I would have stacked the box against Fournette. I would be shocked if that's not what happened. Uh, you know, why would you let, you know, Leonard Fournette even have a chance to beat you? So, you know, I would I would say that was, you know, probably the, the game plan and probably what happened. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins, he's probably about as matchup proof as a receiver as you get. 
but I wouldn't start. Well, I mean, in a regular league, I would, but in DFS, I wasn't touching Hopkins. Um, no, no reason to start anyone against Jalen Ramsey. Yeah, um, that makes sense. But, but yeah, I mean, Carlos Hyde had a really good day. I mean, got the bulk of the carries. Uh, like Duke Johnson, you know, six carries. Um, you know, the one catch, or not? No, not even a catch. I'm sorry, one target. So that's a little bit surprising. But I mean, let's not forget Jacksonville defense. You know, last year was pretty elite um you know the the defense isn't necessarily the problem um it's it's nick Foles going out and uh that's i think the problem with with westbrook it was you know i don't think westbrook is necessarily the the best receiver in the world but him and Foles had a really good um rapport going on and as soon as Foles went down i think kind of there goes you know dd westbrook yeah yeah you you might you might be right there and i don't know if i would call the jags elite last year i think they were you know I, I mean, they were good. They were definitely better half of the year, you know, better half of the of the league. But they definitely took a step back from that 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 twenty uh, that twenty eighteen or sorry twenty seventeen season they had. But uh, moving on in this game, real quick analysis. Obviously, Patriots forty three, Dolphins zero. <laughs> the Dolphins need to just stop playing football this year. Just just give up, guys. Like this is you you're trading. Like your whole team doesn't want to even play for you. It is obvious, um, and you're basically splitting like pulling quarterbacks in it off and on the field constantly like rosen had 18 attempts fitzpatrick at 21 he had, fitzpatrick had three interceptions but like i'm pretty sure two of them were not his fault um well at least one of them wasn't yeah that's all the tip for the, sure the, but yeah the, the pick six definitely wasn't uh, it's so bad man um but as we sort of expected with the running backs, Michelle, this was his game. 21 carries, 85 yards, and a touch. Yep. Um, White didn't really do much except for a little, like, dump-off pass that he took in. Um, I think besides the running game for New England, uh, obviously all all eyes focus on Antonio Brown in this game. Probably biggest shocker is he got eight targets from the bat, man. Um Caught four of them for a touch. He could have had a second one. And, um, you know, it really hurt Edelman and Gordon big time. I mean, Gordon caught two for 19. But Edelman only only saw four targets, and he caught all four of them for 51. So still, like, okay from an efficiency standpoint. But, you know, this was what I was truly worried about as a Edelman fan in multiple leagues is that Brown was going to come in and just dominate things. Um, So... Who knows how it happens with Brown, but it sounds like he's gonna be there for a little while. Um, I know what. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, I mean, this game's not a lot to talk about. Um, no. I mean, the AB signing, as far as you know, the Patriots are concerned in real life, it's just fucking disgusting. You know. Yes. Um, you know, I mean, just make make probably the best team in the league that much better, fantasy wise. You know, unless you have Tom Brady shares sucks you know i mean you know, there's nobody nobody other than i mean tom brady that that benefits i mean hell even antonio brown owners i i'd rather have him be the the number one guy in in oakland than you know you know having to fight with gordon and edelman you know for catches most likely so not a whole lot to talk about this other than the fact that the only miami dolphins game that counts for the rest of the year is as we know week six against the redskins <laughs> Who wants to lose more? <laughs> yep. The Haskins, Haskins, and Rosen Bowl. Oh, no. All right. Get your popcorn, here. Ready. Saints and Rams. And oh, no, man. Breeze hurt. He's going to go see a hand spa- specialist. Um, that doesn't sound good, man. Like, you got to worry about that. Bridgewater came in and I guess performed admirably, but the fact that he couldn't score at all is just not good. 17 for 30. 165 for him. Kamara takes a huge hit without Breeze. Uh, 13 for 45. Thomas still got his a little bit. I mean, 13 targets, so at least he's like heavily targeted. But this whole offense takes a huge step back without Breeze. So that's obviously the big, the big news there. On the other side, um, I think the good news is that Gurley saw 16 carries as opposed to Brown six and got the goal line, not the goal line, but the red zone work, which he did not get last week to Malcolm Brown. Um, you know, the receivers, as we sort of expect, uh, Cup saw nine targets, but like the production 
kind of is shared. Woods actually had a touchdown called back, which is unfortunate for him because he had a pretty bad game because of it. Um, but I mean, I think the big news out of this is is Breeze. I mean, are you would you even be remotely like say you're in a two quarterback league? Are you looking at like a Bridgewater? I don't think in a single quarterback league you are, but you know, two quarterback leagues. Are you looking at like a Bridgewater as a, as a potential pickup here? Probably not. Well, I mean, I guess it depends on the specifics of the of the league. You know, I mean, if I lost Breeze, would I look to pick up Bridgewater? I mean, probably. I mean, even you know, I guess he'd make a good third quarterback at this point. Um, I mean, that that offense still has a lot of talent, uh, but you know, Breeze is the you know the catalyst of all that. I I think. Um, yeah, you know, as great as as great as Kamara is, and as great as Michael Thomas is, you know a lot of that problem. Not a lot of it, but a, you know a chunk of that stems from you know Drew Brees throwing the ball because when Drew Brees went out, they didn't do shit. Yeah, it was bad. Uh, here's hoping Brees is healthy, man, because the NFL is much more fun with him in it. Um, yeah, without Breeze, they're not touching the playoffs. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're gonna be bad. So, last game here we got is Bears Broncos. And oh my gosh, ladies and gentlemen, the Bears won the game with a walk off kick. <laughs> Exciting stuff, guys. This guy's got a contract forever in, the, in Chicago, right? Um, <laughs> they've had kicking problems forever. It feels like. Uh, on the Bears side, for me, I think there's a lot to talk about here, even though they only scored 16 points. And it's because, one, Trubisky looked bad again. Now, granted, it's Denver. We get it. But he looked bad, man. Like, 120 yards and nothing. Uh, didn't run one yard one or one rush for eight. Um, and then on the other side of that, or, you know, the other part of the, the offense, the rushing, is they gave David Montgomery the ball. 18 carries for 62 and a touchdown. That's what we like to see as opposed to giving Davis eight Montgomery four. you know, Cohen six, like stop it. David Montgomery was clearly the better runner last week. The stats didn't say it, but the eye test showed it. And everybody else, everybody I know on Twitter and my friends who watch football saw it. Um, you know, Obviously, I think Trubisky's is kind of whatever. Maybe he'll be better, you know, next week against a, a, a worse defense. But um, do you think this trend with Chicago using Montgomery more is going to continue? It probably goes mostly game by game. Um, I mean, Tree Cohen didn't didn't do anything this week. Um, four rushes, eighteen yards. You know, big whoop. Um, but you know what? where he makes his money is uh, you know, catching the ball, mm-hmm. five targets, two catches for seven yards. So he was, you know, pretty much taken out of that game. I think that if I, you know, if I was, you know, running the bears or especially if I was a bears fan, yeah, I'd be thrilled that, you know, Montgomery's the one, you know, getting the carries. Cause I mean, honestly, Tariq Cohen really shouldn't be. Um, yeah. And he, he actually did kind of get kinda a rush last to. week. Now that I, now that I said that. I forgot. He I mean, did not get a rush last week. I mean, he kind of has to get, you know, some carries because you can't just put him out there and, you know, oh, it's a pass. So, you know, he has to get, you know, carries. But you you want to see Montgomery getting the majority of the carries. But at the end of the day, who really gives a shit what you do when you kick a game-winning field goal and you're a Chicago Bears <laughs> fan? You and know, I mean, <laughs> I mean, hell, man, you make a field goal in the second quarter and, you know, put the guy in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Uh, on Denver's side, Flacco is Flacco, you know, 292 and a touch and a pick. Um, uh, Sanders looked good. You know, I've, I, I've, I've said it before. I am absolutely shocked that he's back at this age with the injury he had as late as he did last year and being as explosive as he is. Caught 11 for 98 and a touchdown, dude. Uh, Sutton took a step back this week with 4 for 40, but I'm not truly worried about him. I think he's still just a, he's a top-notch talent. On the running game, this is what you're worried about with Lindsey. Pretty much a 50-50 split, man. 13 carries with for him and 11 for Freeman. Freeman had 54 yards rushing to, to his 36, so that's not good news. And the one area that you think Lindsey's going to take over Freeman is in the passing game, but it wasn't so this game. Freeman caught 5 for 48. Lindsey was 4 for 30. Both had 7 targets, so it was pretty even there, too. So... I don't know, man. Are we just going to have to, like, 
roll the dice. You know, they're kind of flex plays at best at this point going forward. Yeah, I'm surprised. I mean, literally, you you couldn't get more even pretty much than than Freeman and and Lindsey were. That's surprising. Um, I think the most surprising thing looking at this game is Joe Flacco threw the ball 50 times. Um, okay, like <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you know if I'm trying to to beat the Bears if I'm thinking, hey man, let, let's get Joe Flacco, you know, halfway <laughs> to 100, and we got a chance to win this game. But he's an elite quarterback, man. Yeah, sure he was with an elite defense. <laughs> um, but again, so, you know, hey, how different would it be if, you know, that 53-yard field goal went off a couple of uprights and didn't go in? It would be a different feel. So, you know, it is kind of it is kind of funny that, you know, that field goal going in really does kind of change the narrative. I mean, could you imagine the Bears being 0-2? Um, you know, and then, you know, I don't know. I, I, you would look at it differently. I mean, it's definitely one of those things where, you know the the final score, the the outcome, really kind of does change your perspective a yeah, little bit. People aren't going to focus on Trubisky as much being as bad as he was this game. Yeah, he was won. terrible he was again. Go, but he won didn't. the game. Yeah. No, he didn't. <laughs> yeah, well, neither did Joe Flacco. Yeah. So, but he threw the ball fifty times. So hey. Uh. So the last couple of things we do here is our Sunday venting session, and we didn't get any tweets this week. I. Anybody who's listening, if you want to send me some tweets during the week or, you know, during Sunday with, uh, with your bad beats, you're just kind of venting pissed off stories. I'm pissed. I lost a matchup. Absolutely lost a matchup because Breeze gets hurt and he had thrown a pick before it. Um, that was at a, like just a fluky sort of pick play. Um, negative 0.5 points from Breeze in that league. Uh, that sucks. You never want to see. You, you're not going to win when the quarterback gives you negative points. <laughs> so, um, And Wentz isn't doing me much better than a couple others, unfortunately, even though he is back in the game, thankfully, but uh, still not doing great. Um, you got any, any – I know you're more of a DFS guy, but you got any sort of bad beat stories this week? Uh, well, Kamara, I had a lot of ownership oh, yeah, in, in Kamara, Kamara this week. Too. He didn't help me either. <laughs> um, so, so that kind of sucked. Um, I mean, that was the worst of it. Um, I mean, for, for fantasy purposes, that's about it for, for real life purposes. I, I would probably give my left fucking nut if, if the lions would fucking blitz on third down, just, just to mix <laughs> things up, you know, just, just to make it, just to give them a different look. I mean, not, not because, you know, it's a smart thing to do and, you know, that's what good defenses do. Just fucking surprise me and blitz Come for on, one. Like that cover like, three? Fucking, like a cover fucking five, man. <laughs> like, the Cardinal, like, like, hey, let's blitz one and, you know, let's keep three guys on the sideline in case, you know, the players in the field need a water in between the play. Hey, but they like, held the charges to 10 points. Anyway. Wow. Um, so what do I need Monday? I need Lev Bell not to suck, basically. I'm down by, like, 15 in one league and he's left for me and uh i just i need him not to suck i need that shoulder not to just give out and if it is going to give out give it out in pregame because i got ty <laughs> montgomery ready to roll so yeah it's not good not not looking good for me man i, I have a really bad feeling about tomorrow night in left bell i really do so yeah, for for me i really just need i don't i don't have anything going on for it other than you know a dfs lineup so for me, I need the game to be watchable. You know, um, yeah. you know, Darno is not playing. Le'Veon Bell I probably know. isn't going to do anything. Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. Maybe Baker will get arrested on the field or something. You know, make something interesting. <laughs> maybe Baker will get arrested on the field. Interesting, interesting take there. Um. All right, man. Well, that's all we got. I uh, thank you for joining me tonight and going through these games. Hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, and yeah, let us know. Leave comments in the chat here, and uh, we'll be back next week. See y'all later.